Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labi Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labi Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labi Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. Alright, so welcome back once again to our live session today. So yesterday we looked at uh, simple compound interest. And then today we are continuing the latter part of the discussion, which is part two on simple compound interest and present value. So if you haven't watched that video, on the description of this video, you see the link there. After that, do all to go through before actually you get to understand the whole issue about compound interest if you also have any question from yesterday discussion too you can drop it in the comment section while we take the discussion further to look at other issues i hope i can be heard loud and clear i hope i can be heard loud and i hope i can be heard loud and clear okay that's fine so if i can hear loud and clear then that's good so today we are continuing the discussion by looking at promissory notes if you just join us do all to like the video share the link as also that others will get the benefit to also join us in that case so today we are looking at promissory notes we are looking at promissory notes promissory notes promissory notes so as i said yesterday we discussed simple interest and compound interest together so today we are looking at promissory notes okay before we get started i think there's some comment coming here saying that you excluded the time compounded in the first example under the compound interest really okay that's fine but i think they say understanding the principle that's what we are using so if i excluded it then thanks for notifying me for that but i believe that it's the same principle they are using but just that that was a small mistake so thank you so much for that correction i'm grateful for that so that's fine if you have any other questions you can bring it before we get started so today we are looking at promissory notes in that line so what is a promissory note remember as part of the transaction that we deal with in an organization or we deal with with other people within the organization a promissory note is also another form of a transaction that we can use for making payments that we can use for making payments right so promissory note even after before we get to the definition of what a promissory note is you must know that a promissory note is also an item of cash equivalent cash equivalent cash equivalent when we talk about cash equivalents cash equivalents are actually a non-monetary what uh item that we use to make what transaction or that we use to make payment and non-monetary transaction or non-monetary item that we use to make payments for example if i have a check a check can be a cash equivalent right because it doesn't have that physical nature as what the currency that we use depend on the country you find yourself the currency that we use right it doesn't have that same nature so that becomes what a cash equivalent so do the promise notes also what a cash equivalent it is also a non-monetary item that is used for making what payment or make engaging the transaction in terms of what making payment so that's what we need to understand when it comes to what a promissory note for the first takeaway it is a cash equivalent a cash equivalent means that an item that do not have the same nature as a currency that we use to engage in what payment and receipt of a transaction 
all right so a promissory note is also in that line it's a cash word equivalent that we use for making what payment so what is then a promissory note when we talk about a promissory note a promissory note has to do with what a written instruction let's take note that is what a written instruction so let's say we have two parties we have party a and we have party b now when we talk about promissory note a promissory note is a written instruction from one party to another part let's say from part a right to party b and party b promises that you're going to pay certain amount of money to party b on certain word future time this is what we call a promissory note so a promissory note is a non cash equivalent or is a cash equivalent item that is a written instruction from one person to another to pay certain sum of money in future to another party so the one who actually proposed or drawn that of what the promise note we call that person as what the maker of the note the maker the maker of the note or we can call the person as what the proposer of the note proposer or we can call the person as what the data the data of the note right so you might you may have these word alternative names or even the initiator of the notes initiator we can talk about what initiator initiator so either the maker the proposer or the data is a person or the party who actually would makes the notes and then issued or sent in a form of a written instruction then sent to another party called party b to make certain payment to party b at a stated period of what time in future so party b to whom the note is drawn we also call that party b as what the receiver of the note the receiver the receiver or the the, uh, the creditor sorry the creditor or we can call party b as the payee because he is the person to whom the payment is being made to right i mean sorry the uh, promissory note is being what directed what to so you can call the, to whom the part the note is being directed to as what well, the receiver the creditor or the payee and we can call the the one who is drawing the note as what well, the actually the drawer of what the note okay so that is what promissory note is all about it has to do with what a written instruction from one party to another right and that is stating that the one who is drawing or the maker of the note saying that hey i'm going to pay you a certain sum of money in the future and then that's going to be received by what the payee of the note right so when it comes to a promissory note we use promissory notes in businesses where transaction that we engage on whether in the form of goods or services we are not taking in the form of what a credit what kind of activity if it's a good then it's a good on what on credit terms it's a service to or the service that was done on credit term and we expect that payment must be done in a stated future date right so that is all about what a promise you knows so once you know that that's fine so now we know who is the maker of the note and we also know one who is the payee or the creditor of what the note and you also talk about stated sum of money to be paid so that's the sum of money we call that as what the maturity value and I think yesterday we discussed what the maturity value is, maturity value or the future value, right? So that becomes what the, 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 the status sum of money that must be paid to the payee of what the note, right? So that's going to be paid together with uh, whether it carries an interest or not, that's going to be paid to the receiver of the note. So let's take note of that. So we know the maker, we know the payee, we know the maturity value in that line. So as I said, we use promissory notes in a situation where the transaction that we engage was actually on credit terms or the service or the goods that we sold was on credit terms, whether purchase or sold was on credit terms, right? That's where we can make use of what promissory notes in that line. So let's take note of that. So once you have gotten that, then that's fine. So when it comes to a promise, you note, as I said, it's a written instruction from one person to another to pay a certain sum of money in future to another party called the payee of the note. So on the face of a promise, you note, you will see, first of all, you see the face value must be paid. That we call the maturity value or the future value. You also call the face value. That's the amount that must be paid, the face value. The face value or the feature value, or whatever you see here, is the same thing actually. 
let me raise it so the face value or the feature value that's all you see first as the face value that this is the amount that must be paid by one party towards another all right and as we're also going to see the date you are supposed to make the payment that becomes what the the due date the due date you also see that in that line and you also see the maker of the notes who is the data you also see the payee you also see the payee as well and you also see whether the note carries an interest or not and this is also one feature of a promissory note a promissory note may be either an interest bearing or non-interest bearing by an interest bearing it is a form of a note that goes with what an interest and it says that in this type of what promissory note the maker or the debtor of the note is expected to make payment in sum which is the combination of what the interest that must be paid in addition to the initial amount that was what actually uh actually whether it was borrowed or the kind of transaction that engaged that was on a credit terms right that must be, this is what we call an interest bearing promissory note it goes with an interest so you must pay an interest together with the initial or the face value of what the uh the transaction right this is what we call an interest bearing note but if it's non-interest bearing note then it means that here you don't pay any interest here you don't pay any interest whatever was actually was being in uh, the face value of the normal transaction is what it's going to pay at the stated sum in the future this is what we call a non-bearing interest permission note so you may have an interest bearing permission note and a non-interest bearing permission note so that's also one takeaway that we need to have when it comes to promissory notes so these are some of the features that you see the maturity of the due date the data the data of the notes the payee of the notes and in that, so you also see the interest so the interest here too can be in the two form whether it's an exact interest or an ordinary and yesterday i believe we discussed all these things so if you haven't watched this right after this you must go to to watch that is a link the link at the description of this video so that you can assess it in that line so that one too can also be an aspect and also the period that you must supposed to what make the payment from the day that the transaction occurred to the time you must make the payment we call that as well the period right because that's the period so it can be let's say three month period it can be let's say three months it can be let's say uh, five months it can be let's say depends on the transaction it can be one year i mean it can be number of what periods whether it's months year or quarterly whatever it that be that becomes the period of what they know so you see all these items as found on the promissory note as found on the promissory note and this is what we need to understand going forward when we come to promissory note and I believe that is clear. So this is what we need to understand when it comes to a promissory note. And we also know that a promissory note may be an interest bearing or non-interest word bearing, right? So once we have gotten that, then we can also take the discussion further by looking at how to calculate in case, let's say we have a promissory note which bears an interest, an interest bearing note. How do you calculate that? It follows the same logic that we used to calculate what the simple interest in relation to that right the same logic that's that when it comes to a promissory note we make use of the the ordinary and then the exact method of calculating promissory notes and we also make use of the data a lot so this is what we need to understand going forward so we can be asked to compute for compute for an let's say an interest bearing promissory note of let's say uh let's say the in the face value actually let's say the or the initial amount or the being the principal in this case let's say or so let's say uh let me put a figure like two thousand okay and they are saying that this goes for an interest that is the rate the rate for the interest to be let's say ten percent and they're saying that this exact time exact exact time and the period we're supposed to be paid here you're talking about a time should be done within what 60 days 
right should be done in 60 days and remember we are we are also making use of what the rate which is the exact time right and the t is or 60 days so the question is what is the interest on this note of 2000 must be paid within 60 days so how do you calculate that here you tell us that interest should be equal to the principal which is what 2000 right multiplying the rate of what 10 percent remember here we're talking about exact time and we know that the exact time we make use of what the denominator should be what three six five days or three six six days a leap year right so here you're going to be two thousand dollars multiplying ten percent and then multiplying what 60 because of the exact time we we divide by what 365 days and we are good to go all right so here once you compute whatever you get then becomes what your interest in that line please do want to share the video and like it as well so that others will get the benefit to join in that case so here all i'm going to do is say that two thousand multiplying 2000 multiplying 0 0.1 multiplying what 60 out of what 365 and what are we getting we are getting what 32 into decimal place 8 8 8 rather 8 8 so this becomes the interest on this word note of 2000 must be paid so for us to determine the full amount that should be paid by the maker of the note then that should be the maturity value or the future value which should be equal to the principal plus the interest right plus the interest so what is the principal in this case it was what 2000 so we have 2000 plus the interest of what 32.88 into the decimal place so what are we getting so we are getting what 2000 and 32.88 and this is what we're going to see on the face of a promise note when it's being written by the maker to the payee of the note so this becomes an interest bearing promise note it carries an interest right and this is what we need to understand when it comes to an interest bearing promise note but if it doesn't have any interest attached to the promise note then it wouldn't see any rate and whatever must be paid at the maturity value will be equal to the face value or the principal and you get that so that is what we need to when it comes to promise note in that line when it comes to a promise note in that line so let's take note of that and also one key thing that we also need to understand when it comes to promise note about its ability to be transferred when we talk about transfer of promise note it's very key then transfer of promissory notes whether it is transferable or not promissory note whether it's transferable or not if a promise note is a transferable note then we call it as what being a negotiable word instrument or being a negotiable word note by negotiable means that we can transfer or sell to another party in this case called a third party do you get that so that becomes what one key feature of what a promise note as it having the ability to be transferred to another party so most of times in 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 in, in a real world business situation one party who is actually the data may provide or propose the note and then send to another party who is actually the payee of the note and here lies the case and given the condition about the number of days or number of months supposed to make the payment, that becomes what the period or the terms of what the transaction that must pay within a particular or within a stated period. If the payee of the notes can't wait for the note to mature for, for him or her to receive that full amount of payment, if it carries an interest, together with an interest, then if it's also a negotiable what instrument, then the payee must also can also have the ability to sell the notes because maybe it may be due to that maybe be the payee might need some uh, financial assistance to support his or her business because he's he or she is in financial difficulties and can't wait for the note to mature so when it happens like that then 
the payee will also send the note to another party, right? To get money from the other, but that's where we talk about the transfer or selling of for the note being a negotiable word item. So when it happens like that, then we are talking about a transfer of for the promissory note. And in such a situation, when the payee transfer that amount to another party, remember the payee is not going to get the full amount of the of the transaction, which will include the initial amount and that of the interest. No, because it's going to be paid to the payee. The amount you're going to receive is going to be below the maturity value or the face value of the amount that's supposed to have been received if the payee should have waited for the note to be matured. Do you get that? So when it gets into that, then we are talking about discounting of a promissory note. So discounting of a promissory note means that it is a situation where the payee of the note, after receiving the note from the maker of the note or the debtor of the note, can't wait for the note to mature and then decide to transfer the note to a third party, which can be in a form of what banks or financial what uh, financial. I mean, it can be in investment companies or financial investment companies. It can be banks or generally financial institutions. When the payee transfer that money to that financial institution, all that is trying to say here is that I want money because I can't wait for the loan to mature, right? I can't wait for the loan to mature. So I will need what a money to meet my current what uh, activity that I'm doing so that I can continue with my operation of the business. So when the payee transfer the note to that financial institution, then the financial institution is the one now going to assume the risk of what ensuring that the data of the note make the payment and the risk is that the data might fail not to pay the full amount of the note at the exact time or the due word date so we have part b we have part a we have part a we have part b and we have part c the part a is the data of the note who actually proposed the note and then sent to what part b who is the payee of the note right the payee of the note. And since party B cannot wait, he will then transfer the note towards another party called a third party. And this third party can be in the form of what banks, can be in the form of banks, investment towards companies or investment institutions, and so on and so forth. So when party B then transfer the note to the third party, who is the banks or the investment, the party B is not going to receive the full amount of what the loan, assuming that he or she should have waited for that, assuming that party B would have waited for the loan to mature, where he should have received the full amount of the loan in terms of what the initial amount and then the interest. So when you transfer to the third party, then the third party is going to discount that amount of money and then pay the rest to the party B. When we when Set activity okay, we call it discounting of what a promission note. And it's always going to be there. The process we're going to get, the party B going to get is going to always be below the face value, assuming that party B will have wait for the loan to mature. This is what we call discounting of what a promissory note. And here lies the case. Now is a case that the transaction now is going to fall between what the Part A and then Part C, because now Part C is the one going to assume the risk of ensuring that Part A pays what the amount that he or she would own, right? And the risk is that the Part B might not might fail not to pay the full amount at the exact or the due word date. So because of that, then Part C, being the third party or the bank, will also have to put in place some mechanism that also ensure that his interest also factored in this transaction where lies the case you're also going to make some form of interest from the amount that is going to discount to party b so in this case part c is also going to charge an interest on the maturity amount that must be supposed to pay towards party b who is the payee of the note and once such situation happens then we will say that we have discounted the note we pay an amount below the maturity value to the payee of the note after it has been transferred to the third party. And this is what we call 
a negotiable instrument, a negotiable instrument. So a promise note can be a negotiable instrument, means that it can be sell or transfer to another what, party. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. If you have any question on this, let me know before we take a particular question to explain the whole issue about the transfer issue. And then we take ourselves off and solve some particular questions on simple compound and promise notes based on yesterday's discussion and today's own. So if you have any questions, let me see in the comment section. If you just join us, thank you so much for joining us. Please do want to like a video, share it as well. If you have any questions, you can drop a comment in the comment section. So we'll take it from there. Okay, so let's see. Let's say we have we have a, a promissory note that says that, that says that, uh, that says that, or the transaction occurs on, let's say, how should I even put it? Let's say it occurs on 15th of January, right? That's where the transaction occurred. The whole transaction it occurred on 15th January, right? The transaction date. So let's say the transaction date. The transaction date. All right. And then this was the amount that was supposed to be what paid as the initial amount. The initial amount to so refer that as a principal. So the initial amount being the principal. Let's say it is actually thousand five dollars. Thousand five hundred. And then let's say we also have it carries an interest, so it goes with an interest. It goes with an interest. So an interest word bearing what note is an interest bearing what note. It is an interest bearing note. And then they are saying that the interest bearing note is what having the rate of what, let's say, so rate, the annual rate of, let's say, uh, 5%. Okay, so that is what is happening here. And then this must supposed to be paid the period or the time, the time duration that must be paid, must be paid within what, let's say, uh, should I even put it, let's say 120 days, 120 days. This transaction is in between what, A and what, to what, B. It is A who actually what, actually, Scrape this note and then send to what party B. Okay, so we have 15 January that being the transaction date and the amount the principal here is a thousand five hundred, the rate is five percent, and then the days or the period for which you are supposed to make the payment to the due date is what 120 days. Now here lies the case that during uh let's say in the month of uh remember the interest we are is also exact exact time exact time so let me add that one to it it's exact time exact time exact time so let me add that one to it right okay so during the uh the activities of the hope i mean the business or the transaction between a and b on let's say on 15th the same 15th of march on 15th of march on 15th of March, no, 15th of March is very bad. So let's say on 15th of February, on 15th of February, okay, party B couldn't wait for the loan to mature and then transfer the note to another party, say party C, who is what? An investment company or a bank. So being a bank, right a financial institution financial institution right let's say bank right he then transferred the note to the bank so that they can discount or get him some money to continue with his activity the bank also said that okay since we are now going to assume the risk of what this whole activity which is that the party b might not pay the full amount at the stated sum or the due date then we're also going to actually we need also need to make an interest on this transaction. Then we're also going to charge an interest of what? An interest of, let's say, 3% on this transaction, being the rate on this transaction. Here to be the same as exact time we are using. Exact time. All right? So this is what is happening. Okay. 
So this should tell you that Part B didn't actually wait for the loan to mature and then on 15th of February, then transfer the loan towards Part C. So this is the date you are going to discount the note, right? This is going to discount the note. And in discounting the note, we discount it at their maturity value. As I said, we discount it at their maturity value. So this is the whole question that we have been given. So we are asked to find one, the interest on this uh, note to find the maturity value right and three find the discount amount after it has been transferred to party c and then what will be the process that will be paid to party b after discounting this is what we have been asked to find so one we are asked to find what the interest so that's going to be i what will be the interest so since we are using the exact time since we are using the exact time okay in calculating our interest then simple interest is going to be is going to be what uh principal multiplying the rate right in percent multiplying what the time okay so what was our principal was what thousand five so we have what thousand five dollars multiplying the rate of what what was the rate here the rate between A and B was what? 5%. It's exact time, so 5%. Okay. And then multiply. What was the time? In terms of period, it was what? 120 days. So since we are using exact time, that should be what? 120 days divided by what? 365 days. Okay. So what are we getting as our simple interest in this transaction? So we have 1,500 multiplying what five percent multiplying what multiplying uh 120 over 365 so we are getting what what are we getting we are getting 24.6.66 into this map 0.66 0.66 dollars so this is the interest we are getting so far so once you get the interest on so this word must be paid as an interest on 1,500 together with 1,500 to party B at the date of or at the maturity what date to party B from part A, right? Okay, so we can then also determine our maturity value of this transaction. So we say that maturity value should then be equal to the principal plus the interest, plus the simple interest in this case. So what are we getting? The principal was what, 1,500? plus 24.66 okay so what are we getting in all we are getting what thousand five hundred and twenty four point six six dollars so this the whole maturity that must be paid to party b when the loan matures within 120 days but here lies the case party B couldn't wait for the loan to mature for him or her to receive 1524.66. And then later at the within the period or within the days that was supposed to be paid by the maker of the note, then decided to transfer the note to financial institution called Party C, who is now in the bank, to assume the rest of what the whole transaction. So what is happening here? You ask yourself before we can know that, then we also need to calculate what is the due date between part A and part B, right? And yesterday we discussed how we calculate due date, so this shouldn't be a big problem. So due date in this case, or the maturity date, so let me use that maturity date MD, should be equal to, or the due date should be equal to, so what was the date that the transaction occurred? That was 15th January, right? So we have 15th January. So we have 15th January, okay? Plus how many days? 120 days. Plus 120 days. So here, as we discussed yesterday, you just play with the numbers, okay? So you just have to add the two numbers. 15 plus 120, what are we getting? We are getting 135. So once you're done, you just pick your calculator. And then you just deal with it. You ask yourself, in which month was the transaction actually did okay? It occurred in what January, right? So you ask yourself, since we are dealing with exact time, then we are using the normal days in the month. 
we are using the normal days in a month, right? So since an exact time, then we'll say that 135 being the total days. All that I want to do here is that January has what? January has what? 31 days. So we subtract, first of all, subtract 31 from here. And we are left with 104, which is not what? Which is abnormal, normal days within a month. So from January, we move on towards February. So February is also going to be 28, subtract 28 from here. We are left with 76, which is also have normal days in a the month. Then from February, we move on towards March, which is also 31. Then we subtract, we are still left with what? 45, and which is also abnormal days in a month. So from March, we move on towards April. April has how many days? Since we are using that time, we are using the normal days. April also has what? 30 days, so we subtract 30. So meaning that when you subtract April's own from here, we are left 15 days. So meaning that the transaction actually a due date for this transaction is going to so from April move on towards May. Isn't so? Yeah. So mean that the due date for this transaction, the maturity date for this transaction is going to be 15th of what May. It's going to be what 15th of May. So you have 15th of May being the being the maturity what day. So that's going to be 15th of what May. So it's going to be 15th of May. Simple, then you are done. 15th of May, and you are done. Okay, so once you get the maturity date or the due date for this loan, during this period, party B couldn't wait and then decided to transfer the note to another part, say party what C. So, how do you also calculate? The proceeds that party is going to receive after the transfer, because remember, once he transferred to party C, he's not going to receive the full amount as for the maturity value of what thousand five hundred twenty four point six. That's not possible. He's going to get something that's below this figure, right? That you see here. Okay, this is what we call a discounting of what a promise. You know, we discount it at their maturity value. So let's see also how we discount it. So in discounting. A maturity uh, uh, value or of a promissory note, if actually it's from the bank, but the bank always make use of what 30 days within a month and also use 30 days within what a year. But since here in this particular case, we are given the exact time, then we'll make use of what the normal what days in a month. All right, so let's take it. But bank always make use of what 30 days in a month. 30 days in a year. That's why we need to take note. So how you also calculate the discount amount, discounting of what the maturity value. So before we do that, you must also know the number of days from the discount date to the due date. So what was the discount date in this particular question? It was on 15th of what February, right? And what is our due date? Our due date is what the maturity date is what 15th of what May. So between 15th of February to 15th of May is part C, who is now assuming the risk of what receiving the loan from part A. The risk is that the part B, part A might not pay the initial amount and the interest that bear with what the note. Hope you get that. So in this particular case, here we must discount the note that's going to be the maturity value of the note multiplying what the bank discount rate that was given multiplying what the number of days from the discount date to the due date right so the number number of days from the discount date to, and since we are using the exact time we divide by what 365 days so number of days also comes in here from the Discount date. So let's calculate that date in that line. So what will be that? So that means that that's going to be from what? 15th. That's going to be from 15th of February to what? 15th of what? May. And how, how many days we have within this period? From 15th of February to 15th of May. How many days do you have in this period? Let's do the calculation. Since we are using our normal days within the month so that's going to be so within february we have what 28 days so if you have 15 already taken or when you take 15 from 20 what are we left with 28 minus 15 we are left with 13 right so mean that we have 13 
as a remaining days in February. So from February, move on toward March, which is going to be about 31. So from March, move on to April, which is about 30. So after April, we move on to May. So the due date is on 15th of May, so plus what, 15, plus 15. So how many days do we get from the discount date to the due date? So we have what, 13 plus 31 plus 30 plus 15. I hope my calculations are right. 13 plus 31 plus 30 plus 15. So we're going to get what, 89 days. We're going to get 80 nine days so this is the number of days that the bank being the financial is going to assume the risk from that of what the party what a to pay the loan so therefore the discount amount being the interest that the bank will charge is going to be on the maturity value which is what 1524.66 okay multiply the discount rate that the bank gave to us in this question as what three percent okay and then multiplying the number of days that the bank will assume the risk from part a which is what 89 divided by what 365 days so what are we getting in total what are we getting in total so straight away we will say that here we're going to have we're going to have here to be equal to what 1524.524 0.66 multiplying what three percent and then multiplying what 89 divided by 365 okay so what are we getting we are getting what 11.15 dollars as the interest the bank will also receive okay so once we get the discount amount then we can determine the amount we're going to pay to uh part b who is the payee of the note right as a process so how do you determine the process that's going to so process to be paid to part b is going to be the maturity value okay minus the discount amount so any amount that we get a discount amount from the third party being it interest going to end from the risk going to assume when we take that amount from the maturity value in the amount left going to the process going to pay towards the payee of the notes so what are we getting we have here to be 1524.66 right minus what 11.15 and what are we getting at the end of the day so we have thousand two hundred thousand five hundred and what 24.66 minus 11.15. So this is why we're going to be left at the end of the day. You have what 1513.51. 1513 points. So this is what you're going to pay towards party B, who is what the payee of the note as a process. So this is the whole issue about what. The promissory notes and discounting so the discount amount the discount amount is going to be this value that you see here right this is a discount amount and the proceeds which is the discount or the amount going to pay that's below the maturity value of this which is what the one thousand five hundred thirteen point five one and i don't know for you to get the interest that party b will earn from this whole transaction that is going to also be so the interest that uh, party B will earn, who is the payee now will earn from this whole transaction is going to be that of the process, which is what 1,113.5 minus the initial amount of what 1,500, right? Because that was the, actually the initial value of this transaction. And what are we getting? You are going to get what? You are going to get what? 13.5. Five one so thirteen point five one becomes what the interest that party B will end from this transaction. That party B will end from this transaction, and party C, who now assumes the risk, also end what eleven point one five as the interest in this particular transaction. And believe me, when you add the two, you are going to get the total interest on the maturity value as what twenty six point sorry 24.66 you get the same value in that line this is what we need to understand when it comes to what 
the promission note, simple interest and the promission note relation and discounting of what promissory note in that line. So let's take note of that. Let's take note of that. If you have any question on this, let me know before we get. Okay, I see the one question here. Let's see. Ajimaya Fori Derek is saying that why did you exclude the time compound at the first example? I think you just joined us. I have explained that. So take your time to go through. You get it. I thought you were talking about a question on this. It should be part actually. I didn't intentionally exclude it. That was just a small bit of uh, mistake. But all the principles and everything holds perfectly. So don't get uh, confused with that. It should be actually be part. So take note. So thanks for the notification. Okay. So this is what we need to only come to what the promissory note and then discounting. Then a discounting. So this is what part B will end as an interest on the whole transaction. And part C will now assume the risk of receiving the extra funds from part A will also earn an interest of $11.15 in that line. This is the whole issue about what promissory note that we need to understand going forward. So if you have any question on this, can let me know before we start to take in our practical section on simple compound interest and then promissory note. Any question? Any any question? If you don't have any question, then let's take the discussion for then look at some few questions on simple compound interest and permission notes, and then we we'll actually end the discussion for today. Please do all to share the link. If you haven't liked the video, like the video as well for me, please and please like the video as well and subscribe to the channel so that you stay connected. At the same time you go live or you upload any video, you can get our updates right away. So let's begin by taking out some few questions on this that we have discussed and let's see how far we can better ourselves. Okay, I think I need to raise this coming. Before that, let's do some small uh, kind of, so that I can take off this. I can take, so. <laughs> Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labby Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content. So let me actually do some eraser here. Share the video as well, share the video as well as you enjoy. Share the videos so others to get the benefits also to learn from us on this channel. Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labby Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting. I'm trying to get off some items from here. We supposed not to be here. Okay, so let let get let get the discussion going. Okay. So this is actually key question to explain the whole issues that we started yesterday on compound simple and then the promissory notes. Okay. So we begin like this. Albert lends $12,500 to his friend Evans, who agrees to pay a compound interest of 12% compounded semi annually. Please take note of this. Very important. So that is the compounding period, right? For five years, and the time is what? Five years. We are asked to use the information to answer question one to what, 10. So the question goes like, how many times will the interest be compounded for five years? So you are talking about the end, the number of times to be compounded, all right? So for us to get the number of times to be compounded, we say that N should be equal to, N should be equal to the compounding period multiplying the time. And what is our compounding? The compounding period is what? compounded or semi-annually. How many semi annual do you have in a year? That is what, two times, right? You have two times, sorry, I said two times, yeah, two times semi annual in a year, right? So two, so that means that our n is going to what, two multiplying the time of what, five years, which is what, five. So what are we getting as what, our number of times we compound, which is what, 10 times. So you get 10 times and you are done, simple. 
hope that is clear. If we were to be compounded quarterly, then you will have said that the compounded period should be two and then multiply by what? Five and you get what? You should say compounded period should be four, rather four multiplying five, you'd have gotten what? 20 times in that line. So let's take a note of that. Now, question two is saying that, what is a periodic interest rate to be applied to the compounding? We said the periodic interest rate being the R is always computed as the annual rate, okay, divided by the compounding what period. Remember, for the rate, we asked to pay the interest that our events will pay for the loan is what 12 percent that is for the year right so 12 percent here is for annual rate but here lies the case the arrangement of this transaction is that events must pay it compounded semi and as every semi and you must pay an interest together with what the initial amount right and since this are annual rate for us to get the semi-annual rate that's going to be the annual rate divided by the compounding period and what is the compounding period that is what semi-annual which is for two right so therefore we say that it should be equal to 12 percent divided by what two and what are we getting we are getting six percent so six percent is going to be the rate that's going to be paid for every semi-annual as an interest right on the arrangement between our bet and events that's what Evans will pay to Albert as an interest. So let's take note of that. Then question number three is saying that how much will Evans have to pay to Albert when the loan matures? Now you see here, so we are talking about what the future value. We are talking about the future value. So the future value, the future value will then be equal to, you know the formula already? Can you tell me the formula in the comment section? Is that possible? So the future value is going to be the present value or the principal multiplying one plus R over 100 all to the power of N. This was what some of you were talking about in the future. Why did I include the N and this kind of stuff? But actually that was a mistake better. So let's take note. So this is how we use the formula to compute. So now we know our R being the periodic interest we also know our n towards 10 times so therefore we can easily compute our future value or the maturity value of the loan and we know that the loan goes for a present value or a principal of what 12,500 so we have here to be what 12,500 into bracket one plus we know r is what six divided by what 100 that's six percent that's six over 100 and then to the power of 10 so what are we getting? So here I can write the whole of this as what feature value being equal to what 12,500 and here can be 1.06 to the power of 10. So what are we getting with the help of our calculator? Let's see what we're going to get. So we have 12,500 multiplying into bracket 1.06 all to the power of 10. What are we getting? We are going to get what twenty-two thousand three hundred and eighty-five point in two decimal place point what? So here's going to be point six zero. Cause when you run the last three letters, I mean the six here to the nine, makes it what ten, and we can't have ten in there. So you also need to run it up to add to the five, making it the five six. So it becomes six zero in that line. So let's take note of that. So you get what? $22,385.60 in that line. So that's going to the future value of what? The loan that Evans must pay to Albert within five years time, which is compounded semi-annual. So let's be guided about that. Then question number four, it goes like, if Albert wanted a maturity value of what? $30,000. Approximately, how much should he lend? How much should he lend to his friend Evans under the same conditions? So here lies the case. They are bringing a change, right? So he, these are some of the issues where the examiner can actually put to the corner to actually to think. They wouldn't use the same information to help you to calculate this calculator. No, they will actually throw in a change in the figures and use other information given to compute for whatever you're asking you to do. So here lies the case. 
it, it goes like if Albert wanted a maturity value of what thirty thousand dollars, approximately how much should he lend to his friend Evans under the same condition? So under the same condition, then we know that our future value in this case has been given to us as what thirty thousand. Okay, so what the question is, or what the examiner is requiring of us is for us to calculate what the amount that should be lent to Evan. That is the present value or the loan amount. All right. So we know that our future value being equal to the maturity value should be equal to should be equal to the present value or the principal into bracket one plus r over what hundred or to the power what n. Hope you are there. Yeah. So we know our my, we know that of our feature value to be what? So this is our feature value of what? Which is 30,000. Okay, and that should be equal to, so we don't know our present value now because our feature value has changed. So we, we need to know amount that we must lend to even so that we, we get 30,000 at the end of for five years. So we have one, and at the same condition, we have our interest rate to be six over 100, and we have our end to what? 10. So here, all that we want to do is to make what PV the subject. So this is what we're going to do. We can write this whole thing as what? 1.06 to the power 10, right? So all that I'm going to do here will say that divide both sides by, or straight up, okay, let me write this here. Let's the present, I don't get a speed. Okay, let me try to do it here. So I can write this as what? 30,000 divided by 1.06 or to the power 10, and that should be equal to my PV. And I hope you understand this. Hope you understand this, yeah. So once we do this, then we'll take our calculator. We'll take our calculator, and then say that therefore, 30,000 to three divided by, to bracket 1.06 to the power 10, what are we getting? So we're going to get a present value let me write it to our present value of what or initial amount which is 16,751.84. So approximately, this is what we must actually it can be approximately to this amount because it didn't say approximately to the whole number, so that's why we dealing with the currency decimal. So approximately 16,751.84 dollars must be lent to even so that we will see what thirty thousand dollars in five years time which is compounded what semi-annual right so let's take note if you have any question please drop in the comment section and let's take it from there do all to share the video and like it as well and subscribe to the channel all right so question number five if evans wanted to repay the loan so now you see the examiner is trying to bring in changes in the parameters there was a change in the feature but now here there's a change in what the time initially was five years now he's saying that if Evans want to repay the entire loan within two years under the same condition rather than the five years how much will he pay to his friend Albert under the same so we just change one variable in the formula and then use the same condition to find the other so once the as a, there was a change in one of the variable, all that I want to do is just to make a change of subject of that variable and then solve for that change. That is all, using the same condition for the question. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. If Evans wants to repay the loan in two years rather than five years, how much will he pay to his friend Albert under the same, so under the same condition, there's a change in time, right? So here, this means that going to affect our uh, number of times and even, yeah, okay, number of times going to be affected. It's only number of times going to be affected and then the time. So now our time in this case is going to be two years instead of the five years and then number of times is going to be what the compounding semi annually multiplying with time, which is what two in this case. And that's going to give us four times. So this is what we're going to change in the equation of the future value. So what are we going to get? How much will we pay his friend? So that's the future value. So feature value is going to give us the principal, which we know is what initially was given us what 12,500, right? Yeah. So we have 12,500. Okay. 
multiplying one plus by the rate will remain the same which is what six out of what 100 okay all to the power of four instead of what 10 because now Evans has decided to make the payment as been agreed by Abbott to make the payment within what two years instead of what the five years hope we get that so in this particular case what are you going to get with the help of your calculator let's see what you're going to get in that line let me see your answer in the comment section what are we going to get at the end of the day let me see your answer in the comment section this one the type it and let me see your answer to see if actually you have your calculator beside you or you are just being a spectator watching you must also be part of the calculation okay so what are we getting So what are we going to get? Okay, since you're not typing, let me get my answer and let's go. So we have what? 15,780.96. This is what I got with my, let's see what it was like, the same thing in that line. Okay, so this is what you're going to get as a feature value. So Evans will be able to pay 15,780.96 within two years instead of the normal amount I'm supposed to pay within five years of what 22,385.60 so this should primarily tells you that the more you keep the money the more you pay an interest right because within five years Evans will have paid what 22,385.60 but here lies the case within just two years see what he's paying so the more you keep somebody's money on the more you pay an interest right yeah so let's take note of that okay i think judith you are right sure that's good thanks for that so that is that in that line so let's take note of that now question number six if albert decided to reduce so you see the examiner is trying to change the parameters in the i mean the the, the variables in the equation and just want you to actually they are not difficult okay so once you know any change all that you want to do is also cause a change if Albert decided to reduce the interest rate to 10%, so initially it was what well, 12%, right? But now he had decided to reduce 10% and compound and compounding is to be done semi and not. There's no there's there's no changes in the compounding periods. How much will Evans pay as interest at the end of five years? So the only change here is what the interest rate for which previously was what five, twelve percent, but here lies the case has been reduced to what. 10%. So when interest rates annually changes, that also going to affect our periodic interest rate. We are not going to go by using the same 6%, rather we're going to use a different rate based on whatever we're going to get after the calculation, right? So now we are going we need to compute for our rates. So our R should be equal to now the annual rate is what 10%, right? So we have what annual rate divided by the compounding period which is we know is still what semi annual, right? So what are we getting? The annual rate is for 10% now, divided by what? Compounding semi which is what two. So we are getting an periodic interest rate to what five percent. So mean that our rate that Evans supposed to pay has reduced from six to what five percent, right? So, but the rest of other information will remain the same. Five years means that now you're still going to make use of our ten times that we are using in this particular case here right which is what two times five getting ten times so be guided all right so always you make reference to what you have done in the past so that you don't backslide all right so therefore what are we asked to find how much will events pay as an interest and then the five so we are talking about interest so when it comes to compounding for us to know the compound interest we say compound interest should be the future value minus the present value or the principal or the loan the initial loan amount okay but before we get that we need to find the future value so that we bring that to get our compound interest or the interest right at the end of the five years so our future value then is going to be the present value which is what thousand twelve thousand five hundred okay multiplying one plus our uh, uh, year and this is going to be what five right out of hundred or to the power ten which is what the 10 times because the compounding period and then the 
time hasn't changed so it's only the rate that was changing so let's take note of that so what are we getting here we can write this as what 12,500 multiplying 1.05 to the power 10 so what are we getting with my case when i computed for that i had i had what the future value to be equal to the future value to be equal to I have which I would like to be called to 20,361.18. This is what I was getting at the end of the day. You can confirm that and let's see if that is true. So this is what I was getting as my feature. So once I get the feature value to be this, then I can say that my compound interest or the interest that Evans must pay at the end of the five years at the rate of 10% compounded semi-annually should be equal to what? 20,361.18 minus what 12,500. And what should we supposed to get as an interest? With my case, I had what 7,861.18. 7,861.18. And that is all I was getting in that line. So let's take note of that. So once you get that, that's fine. So here, there's another trying to play changes with the parameters or the variables in the formula. Once there was a change and other condition remain the same, just use that change and then calculate whatever the question wants you or the examiner wants you to calculate and you agree to what to go. Then question number seven, what will be the maturity value of the loan in question six? So what was the maturity value or the future value of the loan in question six? That was what? 20,361. So here it's just a matter of what writing your answer that the future value you don't calculate it anymore because you are making reference to what question says. So you said that reference to question says our future value should be called to what 20,361.18 and you are done. Okay, then question number eight. What would be the change in interest payment by events if the interest was compounded quarterly in question six so here they are bringing in a change in interest so in question six we were compounding it what semi-annual which is what which we were using what that of 10 percent right right as a way to compute and here lies the case they are asking us that if we also compute that same information where it was compounded quarterly instead of semi-annual here instead of semi annual here, what will have been the change in the interest? So let's see how we go by that, but that will be fine. So here, the only thing that has changed is the compounding period, which has changed from semi annual to what, quarterly. And how many quarters do you have in a year? Four quarters, right? So I mean that's going to what, four quarters. Uh, well, this also affects our number of times yeah it's possibly going to affect number of times how about our interest rate yes it's going to affect our interest so when there is a change in compounding that affects our periodic interest rate are same going to affect our number of times to be compound right so once we have that then we can say that n should be equal to what the compounding period multiplying the time remember the time still remain five years reference to question in six it still remain five years so here we'll say that our n should be equal to what our n should be equal to 4 multiplying 5 and we are getting what 20. what will be our our, our also should be equal to the annual which is what 10 percent in question says divided by the compounding period which is what now what 4. so what are we getting we are getting 2.5 percent question i said question 4 question 6 rather the rate was 10 percent in this case and question 7 or 8 6 yeah 7 yeah, eight is saying that what will be the change in interest payment by events if the interest was compounded quarterly, right? So when there is change in compounding period, it affects the number of times to be compounded, also affect the periodic interest rate. Now we are getting these values. This is what we're going to use to calculate the future value before we determine the interest compounded quarterly, and then we compare that to that of the semi-annual in question six. Hope you get that. Yeah. So this that's, that's what we're going to do in that particular case. So if that is okay, then I can let me bring that parameters here. So I know my n to be equal to four. I know my n to be equal to twenty. My compounding period to be equal to four, and my 
R to be equal to what? 2.5%. So once I've gotten that, let me wait to get some space for other calculations. So therefore, we need to find our future value before we can compute for the interest. So future value is going to give us what? Which is what? 1,500, right? Multiplying one plus, we know R in this case to be what? 2.5 divided by 100 all to the power of 20 instead of the, or instead of four or 10 for question six, yeah, instead of the 10, yeah. So what are we getting? We can say that here, we can write this as what, 1,500, and you can have this as what, 1.025 to the power 10, if I'm right, yeah. So what are we going to get? With my case, I had a total figure of what? 20,482.71. So it's going to be the future value for this arrangement compounded quarterly, right? So once we get that, then we need to compute for the compound interest for this quarterly issue. So that's going to be the future value minus what? The, the present value or the principal. So what are we getting? The future value was what? 20,400. 82.71 minus what? Minus what? 12,500. So, what are we getting as a difference? With my case, I had a difference of what? Difference of 7,982.71. So, now once we get this as the interest, let's go back to question number six. Let's go back to question number. So what was question number six? What were we getting as an interest? We're getting an interest of what? 7,861.18. But when we compound it quarterly, we're getting what? 7,982.71 using the same condition. So that should primarily tell you that the more we compound, the more interest you pay. The more we compound, the more interest you pay. It can be a typical question right the more you compound the more interest what you pay the less you compound the less interest you pay so then clearly see that 7982.71 is greater than what 7861.18 so what will be the the change in the interest here so the change in the interest here is going to be the difference between these two so the so let me quit uh can i erase this yeah, I can erase, I can erase this. I can erase this for now. So the change is going to be, the change in the compound interest is going to be the quarterly what interest, which is what? 7,982.71 minus, minus 7861.18. One point one eight, and with my case, this is what I got. I had what I had an interest change of what one to one point what five three. So the more it compounded, the more interest you pay. So here it's going to one to one. So if it was compounded quarterly, then Evans will have paid what one hundred and twenty one point five three dollars more, right? In addition to uh, this value when we were compounded semi-annually right to that of the initial as a total sum the future value as it um when the due date gets you right so this is going to be 121.53 more of interest when it's compounded what more right so the more you compound the more you pay an interest so i can write more one to one point five three more right so let's take note of that then question number nine if the two gentlemen agree to decrease the interest rate to eight percent so from 12 percent to eight percent but agree to compound it monthly for five years period what will be the periodic rate so now there is a change in the interest rate from that's annual rate from 12 percent to eight percent but there's also a, also a change in what the compounding period from semi-annual to monthly okay so what will be the change in the periodic rate so how do you compute our periodic rate for which we know r to be equal to the annual rate 
divided by the compounding period. Now, what is our annual rate is what? 8%, right? And now what is our compounding period for which we know is what? Monthly. How many months do we have in a year? 12. So we divide by 12. So what are we getting? With my case, I had the rate to be what? 0. Point, in two decimal places to be 0.67%. You can also try that and let's see if that is true. This is what I was getting in that particular case. Now, question number 10 is for you. Put it in the comment section. Let me showcase your answer on the screen here. And then let me give you a bit of high clap for you. Give you a high applause and you are good to go. It says that how many times will the interest be calculated in question 9 above in 5 years? So in 5 years times, how do you calculate what? How many number of times will be interest be calculated? So we are talking about N. So how do you get N? So I want your answer in the comment section so that I can bring it on the screen here and give you a high and cheer you up. Mm -hmm. So who is giving me that? Who is the fastest person to give me the answer for N? I'm waiting. Okay, let me give a time. Let me give a time. 30 seconds. Then I think we'll end the discussion here and then We'll continue whether today's evening or tomorrow, we'll look at the practice question also on the promissory notes, and then that will be the end for the promissory notes. So I'm giving you 30 seconds. Give me the answer for the number of times. So now here we are compounded, compounded monthly, and then we have been given five years. So what will be? So 30 seconds. Let's see what you can do. Okay, time up. Let's see who gets that. If people are leaving, you know, he said 12 times 5. So, what is 12 times 5? Judith, he said 12 times 5. So, what is 12 times 5? So, 12 times 5 is what? So, we tell us. So, here, our n shouldn't be equal to the compounding period multiplying what the t. So what are we getting? Compounding period was what? Monthly. So here, 12 multiplying what? 5 here, which is the time. So we are getting what? 60 times. We are getting 60 times. So let's take note of that. So this, the number of times going to be computed if the compounding rate is to be compounded monthly for 5 years. For 5 years. So let's take note of that let's take note of that any question up to this stage any question okay in absence of any question then we'll end the discussion here for today some was also putting some formulas okay that's the same thing but what will be the final answer should it if you are giving formulas, what will be 12 times 5 is what? 60. That's what we want to see. But we have tried. That's good. Keep it up. Okay. So, in the absence of any question, silence means concern. I mean, I've gotten all the issues in there. If you have any previous, I mean, if you have any future questions you want to ask, you can drop in the comments as you watch the playback of this video. So, I'll see you in the next section. Thank you for joining us on this channel. I'll see you in the next section. Bye bye. Hello guys, you are welcome back to Labby Premium Concept. On this channel, we share educational content ranging from mathematics to accounting.